What is the number of European non-white soccer players that partake in soccer overseas? 10% of players which are subject to racist acts on and off the field every day. The June 16th article by David Zero reports that racism in soccer has been around as long as the sport itself, and I am here to present a feasible solution to take the first steps in preventing this. Although it may not be easy, it is a change that has to be made to a problem that no longer can be avoided. With the problem of racism in the sport, fans, coaches, and players should be given one warning if they choose to partake in racist acts on or off the field, and if they continue to partake in these actions after the warning is received, they should receive a suspension from the league for one season. Today we'll discuss why there is a need for change and action to be taken, my plan to stop the racist acts, how it will work, and how awareness will be raised, and how the plan will be put into action as well as addressing opponents to the idea. First, let me remind you of some key components of racism in the sport of soccer. There are countless reasons why actions should and need to be taken. The main reason would be the way that fans treat players in the country of Europe. Coaches, players, and fans on and off the field are subject to racist acts because of the color of their skin. A June 8th video produced by ESPN reported that Luis Aragones, the Spanish national coach was heard openly, openly insulting French black superstar, superstar Thierry Henry because of the color of his skin. Instances such as these and others caused Ivory Coast player Mark Zorro to leave the field in disgust because of offensive chants being towards him. Although you may think, why does this issue relate to me? I'm here to convince you that this is a worldwide problem that has been continuing in society. A May 12, 2005 article by Bill Ferris reported that racism as a whole is a pressing issue facing society every day and can be related to the sport of soccer. The Oracle Library of the Library Foundation reported that black employment around the world is twice as high as white and seven out of 10 fights caused around the world are because of race. If solved in the sport of soccer, racism, this will be a crucial step in stopping the overall problem of racism. And that is why I'm here to present a clear, concise plan to stopping this problem. In recent years, some steps have been taken to prevent this, yet incidents still occur on a daily basis. First, recognition of what a racist act is and how it will be recognized must be discussed. In an objective newsletter by Ayn Rand, racism is a belief in the inherent superiority of one race over the other. Although this definition can be interpreted, I believe this relates to the taunting of a player because of their background, beliefs, or color of their skin. If supporters were to take part in my plan, FIFA, which stands for the Federal International Football Association, would need to step in. FIFA is more or less the government of soccer. It regulates games around the world and it relates and the issues of the soccer community, and it also organizes international tournaments. FIFA recognizes this as a problem, but little direct action is being taken. According to President Joseph Blatter in an article from FIFA.com, and I quote, the solution to this problem, as any other, lies in identifying and acknowledging its existence. With the power they possess, FIFA can and should step in. Plan that I plan to implement involves a two-strike and you're out policy. Involving many things, the first would be a team receiving a warning. Any team, no matter where they are from, or with the color of their skin, can receive this warning if they were to partake in racist actions. After this warning is received and the team continue to partake in these racist actions or comments, they would be receive a suspension from the league for one season. Although this may seem harsh, it would be a stern, effective way of bringing the first steps to bring racism to an end. According to an August 9th New York Times article by Jeffrey Marcus, very little is being done in both the World Cup and around the world to stop racism in soccer. The same article reports that only two anti-racism days were taken, were taken part in in the 2006 and 2010 World Cups, where as you can see, a sign was held before the game by the players to stop the racism. Another campaign that was taking place was the uh, cause of Thierry Henry, who was previously mentioned, was a black soccer player of French, and he started a campaign called Stand Up, Speak Up, which I can show you. Let the drama kick, the drama kick, uh, 
Although these campaigns can only help, there is no direct action being taken, and this is why a firm plan such as mine will be effective. It is little, will require little to no cost and minimal extra work with the FIFA governing body. It will require fans to cheer appropriately in fear of the consequences that they could face. Opposition has been, has been shown for this plan. A June 8th ESPN video reported that FIFA President Joseph Blatter has avoided taking direct action in fear that fans will cheer against their team in hopes to get their other teams in trouble. Although this may seem like a loophole in the plan, if no action is taken, the problem is surely to get worse. It will not only continue in soccer, but this is setting a bad example for the issue of race in society. After hearing the problem discussed and the policy presented, I hope you now realize why racism in soccer is such a troubling issue and why a strict solution as mine is necessary. If FIFA were to enact my two-strike policy, the issue is sure to lessen, and minimal work will be required and it will be beneficial for all. With the benefits it provides it is and the issue it prevents, it is central that it is enacted. So whatever action may be taken, it is crucial that it is at least some, so the 10% of non-white players don't have to worry about racism and just playing the game that they love. Thank you.